What's up, everybody? Matt Kajeski here, back again with the Odd Shopper channel. And today we're here to talk college football bets ahead of week eight, the Thursday slate. We've got two games. Before we get started, make sure to hit that thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell so when this and all other content goes live. We're also brought to you by Bet365, and they have a limited time offer to those of you living in Kentucky, Ohio, New Jersey, Virginia, Iowa, and Colorado. You're going to make your first deposit. You'll bet at least $5, and then whether that bet wins or loses, doesn't matter what it's on, you're going to get $150 in the form of bonus bets. If you're in Kentucky, they sweeten the deal further. You're going to get $365 in the form of bonus bets. You must be 21 or older to play, 18 in Kentucky. If you or someone you know has a gambling problem, please call or text 1-800-GAMBLER. Limited time offer, link in the video description below. All right, we'll kick things off with a banger, Rice taking on Tulsa, game that's near and dear to my heart. Rice, they enter this game as a three-point underdog. The total sits at 57 and a half. So interesting spot right away. We'll begin with Tulsa. They have the more interesting injuries to talk about because they returned their original starting signal caller, Braylon Braxton. But he only played in the fourth quarter, was kind of used to spark the offense and did well. Their backup, Cardell Williams, who's been playing a lot this year, hasn't been bad either, though. 60% completion, 9.3 yards per attempt. Where he struggles a little bit is with turnovers. Braxton certainly has the edge in mobility. But Braxton playing well in the fourth quarter, I think, might earn him the start here. And I do personally view him as the more talented signal caller. This is a good offense. And if Tulsa can get a dual threat signal caller in there, I think they are a little bit dangerous. This team only allows 19.3% pressure. That's pretty solid. So he'll be behind a good offensive line. Their run game is decent. The problem is their defense. They're 106th in total defense. They're down a couple players. LJ Wallace hasn't played since week one safety. Kenyon Williams, another safety, has been out. And they also lost their edge, Owen Ostrowski. We'll see if he comes back. I don't anticipate it. But that's led to this defense ranking 106th overall and 127th in coverage. That's a huge problem against Rice, who runs an air raid. They have a 65% pass rate, not particularly fast. But JT Daniels has been efficient under center, 63.5% completion. 8.8 yards per attempt, and he's taking care of the ball. 15 touchdowns, five interceptions. Luke McCaffrey, I mean, these guys should have plenty of space to run against Tulsa, who has had one of the worst, literally a bottom 10 secondary in the country. So Rice often scares me a little bit. Like Daniels can definitely throw over the top, but this offensive line has been a huge problem. 34% pressure rate. They're a bottom three pass blocking unit in the country. Tulsa actually pressures the quarterback pretty well, 36th in pass rush. So for everything they lack in coverage, they're pretty strong up front. Yes, Daniels can throw it over the top of Tulsa, but if he doesn't have any time to do that, what is the success rate of Rice? So that's a question for me. And then Rice's defense is just as bad as Tulsa's. Like Tulsa's 106 in total defense, Rice is 104. Bad against the run, 87. That's a problem against mobile signal callers. 101st in coverage. I mean, it's not pretty for Rice. So right away, I do think there is value on the Tulsa side. That pass rush should be able to get home against Daniels. That they're stronger overall team. Much better offensive line. Better in both trenches. But if you're worried about this, which I'm not going to lie, I am a little bit. I think you can look to the over at 57 and a half. Again, both defenses terrible. Tulsa's offense is 57th in the country. They're pretty efficient. And then Rice does have an exploitable matchup over the top against Tulsa. So I don't hate that either. I'm going to bet both. If you're a little weary, I would tend to side with the total instead of the spread. Second game, another one I did bet. James Madison taken on Marshall. It's a three and a half point spread in favor of James Madison. The total is 50 and a half. If you've been watching these videos for any length of time, we've been backing James Madison a lot and gotten a little lucky doing so. This team knocked off Virginia. Virginia was at 6.5 yards per play. James Madison, 5.9. I'm still going to chalk that up to a pretty good win for them. And, you know, they were an underdog by about a touchdown in that game. So I think they cover either way. Against Troy, they only had 4.5 yards per attempt. Troy was at 4.9. So that easily could have been a loss. Very tight game. They end up winning by two. But I like this James Madison team. And Marshall's a team I've been trying to sell. Have sold them successfully. 
over the last two weeks where they lost to NC State and Georgia State, got clobbered by them. Prior, they played four weak teams in Albany, East Carolina, Virginia Tech, and Old Dominion. Against Old Dominion, Marshall had 5.5 yards per play. Old Dominion was at 8.0, and Marshall comes up with a victory. Just unbelievable. Marshall should have lost that game. And then we look at injuries. Like this Marshall team has a ton of injuries. Cade Conley, their tight end, missed the last game. Caleb McMillan, one of their top receivers, didn't play. Dayton Smith, a safety, he's been missing time. Jacoby Henderson, corner, missed their last game. Carry on Martin, another safety, missed the game. Kylan McCracken, a defensive tackle. In game, Eli Neal left early. Like this team could be down as many as five or six starters on defense. So I understand the want to fade James Madison at some point this year, especially with them hitting the road. But man, this team is way healthier. Like they've had some injuries to defensive backs and linebackers earlier this year. They're all, they've all returned to the lineup. None of them miss any time in game. You now have a defense in Marshall down, I mean, as many as five or six guys facing Jordan McLeod, who's completing 63% of his passes for nine yards per attempt, 14 touchdowns, three interceptions. He's good at running 3.3 yards per carry. That mobility has helped mask what has been a questionable offensive line. You have a good run game with Kalon Black. Receivers like Phoenix Sproles that are doing a lot of things for you. This offense has been solid. They've been putting up points routinely. Just beat Georgia Southern 41-13. to South Alabama, good South Alabama team. 31-23 in their prior game. You have to go all the way back to Troy where they haven't scored 30 points in a game. James Madison's going to rack up points. I still don't buy Cam Fancher and Rasheen Ali. It's just not a dynamic offense. And now with this defense down so many guys, I'm going to continue to back James Madison. No issues with the three and a half. Honestly, if you might wait, this could get to the three. There's this public notion that Marshall's a buy low with all the injuries, which I disagree with. Ultimately, though, we will see. This game will be played tonight. If you have a comment, if I miss something, let me know. We'd love to hear it. If you have a question, you can reach out on Twitter at Matt underscore Gajeski. Otherwise, we'll be back Friday, breaking down the single game, as well as, actually, you know, betting you is already out for the full slate. So check that out. Otherwise, we'll see you guys next time, and good luck.